How's it going, everybody? It's Young here, and welcome to day 15 of the Final Fantasy 15 Countdown Retrospective. Only a half a month to go. It's happening, people. Before you proceed, I highly recommend you check out day 16, in which I shared all the new information and footage from the Malaysian event Comic Fiesta 2014, the last major gaming event of the year where we got to learn a bit more about one of the game's settings, Lestalum. In this video, I'll be diving into news for 2015. There is a lot to talk about, so without further ado, let's dive right into it. 2015 kicked off strong with two interviews that Hajime Tabata did in January, one with website GameSpot and another one with Siliconera, both of which were released in article form on January 22nd, 2015. Let's begin by taking a look at GameSpot's article, through which Tabata had the following things to say. The towns and the cultural references that you see throughout the world, you'll get a sense of realistic towns and cultures. That's one aspect that has remained since the title was first named Versus 13. The first town that was showcased was based on Shinjuku in Japan, and one area we showed in December, Lestalem, was based on Havana in Cuba. And the other watery town we showed is based on Venice. So those are some cultural references that have been made within the game. The world is connected by a continuous land. If those areas were disconnected, it would feel distant from reality. You'll find that you'll be able to walk or drive or take a train and travel through this world seamlessly. I feel you'll be able to experience something similar to a real trip. Then, on the topic of airships, he said, To be completely honest, that's still to be determined. But the development team does understand that this is something everyone is looking forward to. It is a huge technical challenge. As mentioned earlier, all areas are connected. We are trying to tackle that challenge. So at the moment, we can't say yes, they will be included, but we do want to and we're ready to take on that challenge and see what can be done. Tabata also talked about summons and how they are protectors of Final Fantasy XV's planet, guarding parts of the world from annihilation. Moving on, the conversation shifted to dungeons, about which Tabata said, in the most classic Final Fantasy title category. For me, dungeons were very scary things that were chaotic and uncontrollable. In the dungeons, there is this kind of strangeness where something that shouldn't necessarily be there in real life is existing. That kind of strangeness, the non-normal, that feeling you get in those circumstances will be experienced in 15. The interview finally concluded with, in 15, having very many challenges moving forward, including responding to fans and the technical updates required. The company's structural changes. There are so many factors and I'm unsure of the reasoning behind being given the opportunity to pick up and lead the project, but it is what I was asked to do. I really believe I've been given a big challenge, and in that respect, I'm very honored for the opportunity. Moving on, here is Siliconera's article. Here is how the full interview reads. How does the story in Episode to Sky connect Final Fantasy XV's story as a whole? There is a sequence in the full game where you lose your car. The demo was created around that sequence, but the main story is masked within the demo, so you won't be able to experience that. But when you play the full game and reach that moment, you will probably realize that was the sequence in the demo. It's interesting that you took the driving sections out of Final Fantasy XV. That's one of the features that shows how Final Fantasy XV has evolved compared to other numbered titles. After Tokyo Game Show, when we revealed a lot of information about Final Fantasy XV, we received a lot of fan feedback. We had a discussion internally about how to best showcase the new generation of Final Fantasy so our fans get a sense of the game through the demo. Originally, what we were thinking of for the demo is they would drive in a very vast world and get off every now and then to explore the vicinity. But in showcasing the new generation of Final Fantasy, we felt it was important to get a sense of how the characters behave and the battles, given it's the first action-oriented game in the numbered series. We felt it was best for them to get a feel for the battle system. Rather than driving long distances, we felt it would be best to explore the vast world on foot, the combat, and really connect with the world and surroundings around them. When we were considering a demo primarily about driving in the environment, the normal gameplay would be about an hour or so. We altered the structure of the demo so they could walk more freely in the field than battle monsters. You can really explore wherever you want in the environment, and if you play through it normally, there is approximately two hours of content. I think you may have seen the footage where you're walking across a world map. The actual environment in the demo will be several times the size seen in the walkthrough video. 
During this media tour, I went to New York and was able to walk around the city. That was when I was able to get a grasp of the people, the culture, and how cold it was. For players to experience this demo and be able to walk around the world, I feel they will get a good understanding of it. The biggest aspect that isn't included in the demo is magic. Whether the demo had driving or walking, that was a decision the team made about how players should experience the game. For magic, that was a developmental reason. The combat system in the full game has magic as an important part of it, but the graphics aren't polished yet. There was also the summon system, which wasn't refined yet at the time. We made the decision to refine the summon system so we could offer it in the demo at this time. Will we see any of the female characters in the demo, like Sydney, or is it just the guys? The demo won't have any female characters tied to the story, but there will be a female character, Sydney, who will help your adventures within the demo. How does the action-oriented combat system in Final Fantasy XV compare to other action battle systems you made, like Final Fantasy Type-0 and the Third Birthday? As you know, Final Fantasy Type-0 and the Third Birthday were developed on PSP. The biggest change working with PS4 and Xbox One is you have so much more overhead in terms of technical limits and memory. The whole game design and structure of the game is different. For example, the size of the map and how much of it you can utilize for combat. That makes the approach to action and how it is designed different. In the PSP version, each time the game would load, we would need to identify what the player would have to do next. With Final Fantasy XV, the game is not designed around loading times. You can run around the environment freely, so the approach to combat was different. In the third birthday, there is an overdrive function where you can switch your position quickly with another character. I drew on that idea significantly for Final Fantasy XV. Final Fantasy XV has that kind of system and you can utilize that strategically. There is also a cover system where you can avoid attacks to recover. It has a very close effect similar to defending yourself. I drew ideas from the third birthday for that aspect. I can't go into too many details right now, but in terms of drawing from first-person and third-person shooting mechanics, there is this covering system. It's not like you're covering yourself from a shower of bullets, but there are some natural environments where you can recover your HP and then go back into battle. There are some other weapon-related aspects that I will be able to reveal later on. Aside from Final Fantasy XV Episode du Sky, there will be a Final Fantasy XV tech demo players will be able to access too. Can you tell us more about this? Unfortunately, we're still in the planning phase for the tech demo. Since we're still putting everything together, I can't share any details with you today. For Episode of Sky, we wanted to bundle it with Type 0, so everyone would get an idea of what the latest Final Fantasy title looks like. Also, as you know, ever since Final Fantasy Vs. 13, we have been keeping fans waiting a long time, and we wanted to show how the new generation of Final Fantasy series looks. Understandably, there may be people who are interested in a demo of Final Fantasy XV, but due to circumstances, may not be able to purchase Final Fantasy Type-0 at the time. We wanted to follow up and ensure those people can touch upon the world of Final Fantasy XV as well. It may not follow a particular sequence of the game, but they will be provided one map and be able to enjoy different aspects of the game. It was an idea that popped up because we want as many people as possible to get a touch of Final Fantasy XV. This tech demo, by the way, is probably referring to Final Fantasy XV's Platinum Demo. With that out of the way, let's move on to the next major news development. Ten days after these interview articles, on February 1st, 2015, the last day of Taipei Game Show, Square Enix showed off some new tech demo footage for attendees to feast their eyes on. Unfortunately, the footage was only shown on stage, so there is no high-quality version. Here's the best one I could find. <laughs> Surprise! 
次以旅行为主题的这个作品中，对啊，我想跟这么可爱的猫一起旅行，应该是很欢迎。全部美女台湾，美女的可赞。全部メイドイン台湾です。那在这个这个场景里面，大家可以看到，就是猫的视频可以看到，跟平常看到不一样的地方。那你身上的这个规模的设定，これは今までまだえどこにも出していない模型、あの場所に。我们想呼吁所有台湾的玩家们，用我们所有台湾的力量来支持我们台湾的研发团队。台湾的皆さんの力でぜひ台湾の発展を支援してほしい。最后我们就跟伙伴一起就快乐的使用它。啊，皆さんと一緒に仲良くあの餌を食べましょう。这绝对是台湾游戏开发史上面最关键、最历史的一页啊！これは台湾の技術力を持ってます。我们看到的是。都得穿。Head to head， 用猫做主角也不错啊。Moving on, four days later, on February 5th, 2015, Square Enix released a brand new trailer for Final Fantasy 15. This time centered around its upcoming demo episode to Sky. Check it out. Alright, I think this is a good place to stop for today, but news for February 2015 was far from over. A ton of information would yield from an upcoming active time report entirely dedicated to Episode to Sky, but this is some pretty extensive stuff, so I'll save the report for the next video. With that, I would like to conclude today's episode of the Final Fantasy XV Countdown Retrospective. Thank you for tuning in. Let us know in the comments below what you thought about all the new footage and information back then. And to be further updated on all things Final Fantasy, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.